Hello, everyone, and welcome to Citrix Converge 2020. We've got a really exciting session on automating hybrid multi-cloud delivery and what we like to consider essential security practices, those things that we really need to consider as developers to help make sure that we're affecting ongoing operations, giving ourselves visibility, and uh, really being able to automate for operational excellence. My name is Kurt Romer. I'm Chief Security Strategist, a member of the Office of the CTO at Citrix, and I'd like to introduce my esteemed colleague, Ritesh. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Hi, everybody. This is Ritesh Patani. I'm a Principal Software Engineer here in Citrix, uh, work in product engineering, specifically on application delivery and security. Great. Thanks, Ritesh. All right, we've got some really exciting information to share with you. And uh, as part of that, I want you to please read and heed this notice. You'll probably see this a few times during the conference. Okay, from an agenda perspective, we're really gonna talk about automating for security outcomes. Begin with the end in mind. Let's make sure that we're thinking about what the outcomes are and then take a look at what we can do as developers to help get us there. Um, well, the material is gonna be beneficial to architects, administrators, and many others. We're really focused today on the needs of devs, DevOps and DevSecOps in particular. And so if you're an admin, work with your DevOps and DevSecOps team to help implement some of the things that uh, we discussed today and explore some new opportunities. Uh, Ritesh and I are going to be talking about these across the uh, application delivery controller. We're going to be talking about it across application device manager, get into a lot of the tools used by developers and uh, some very specific items there, and spend a little time on style books, which is something that uh, I personally think are pretty cool. They, uh, they really help to automate the development experience and uh, give you a lot of structure to help get you started and uh, get you moving using some of the functions that are available. Then we're going to go ahead and wrap up uh, talking about analytics, visibility, and how you can show some of the results of your efforts and how you can make sure that you're monitoring through any changes to understand that any change or any delta to your code is resulting in the proper behavior as it goes out on the network and goes off across various clouds. We want to make sure that we're providing consistency and uh, as we programmatically and codify different aspects across interfaces, APIs, clouds, and others, we can see exactly that uh, we're achieving the desired security outcomes. And our overall goal is really to move beyond just talking about features and functions. Of course, they're critically important but we really need to think about automating so that we can provide for that level of consistency and um, we can really go back and programmatically affect operations as well as upgrades, as well as moving workloads across clouds, as well as making changes to even things like your uh, keys and certs and secrets and uh, administration succession within, uh, within cloud environments. There's a lot we can do there so that um, we can take the burden off of administrators, we can make things much more consistent, and uh, of course, work towards operational excellence. You'll see a lot of that today. Okay, so um, starting off, we've got several questions we're gonna be talking about through here. And the first is, how do we make sure that we achieve this consistency that I was just talking about as we're looking across complex hybrid multi-cloud type of environments? And um, as we do that, we're gonna begin with the Citrix ADC. One of the first things you wanna take a look at from the application delivery controller is um, how can you provide for operational consistency? And you're looking at this at any type of ADC, whether it's something that you have on premises, whether it's something that is out in various cloud environments, whether it's hybrid or not, or whether it's even cloud native services, which you can spin up without even having appliance or other instances available. But if you do want to have these other instances, we also have the ability to have multiple form factors, which include traditional hardware appliances, as well as bare metal uh, that you can provision on top of, 
uh, virtualized appliances that can run as VMs uh, on premises, on laptops for development, as well as in the cloud. Um, you've got cloud-based appliances that are cloud native and live out there and are instantiated. And then you also have uh, containerized, which are basically Kubernetes and Ritesh is gonna spend quite a bit of time talking about how to interface with those Kubernetes controllers and how to utilize ADC as uh, part of your Kubernetes environment. So continuing on a little bit with uh, configuring and monitoring ADCs, one of the things that we're shooting for here is infrastructure as code. So you're codifying your infrastructure so that it, as you instantiate new appliances, whether they're virtual or not, new services, new applications, you're making any types of changes, you have those defined and codified so that you can go through and programmatically apply them. If something worked as intended, you can use, utilize that same script and, and continue to roll it out. If something wasn't working quite as intended, you've got the ability to go back and see exactly what was programmed in, make those modifications and ensure that uh, you're, you're learning from every iteration and being able to continue to update the environment going through infrastructure as code. And that applies not just for new things you're doing, it's also great when people are going back and auditing and making sure that intended functions were turned on or disabled um, as security needs change. So it's uh, it's something we're, we beg you to think about as you go through this and consider infrastructure as code instead of making any manual configurations. In other words, get out of the GUI as much as possible. One of the things that makes this really easy from a Citrix perspective is we have the ability to do this uh, with a single code base. So all those different form factors I talked about and all the different places that uh, Citrix ADC lives, you've got a single code base and a single style of configuration that you can utilize across any of those. And they're enabled through APIs, Ritesh. Absolutely, Kurt. In your question, right, you asked about two important things, consistent application delivery and security. And when you have your ADC infrastructure, which is spanning across, you know, hybrid multi-cloud environment, automation becomes a key requirement. And that's where uh, application delivery management becomes critical as well. Using ADM APIs not only allows you to automate the, you know, management of your ADC infrastructure, but it helps you ensure consistent configuration and consistent security posture is applied to all your AC instances anywhere in a, in a multi-cloud environment, wherever they may be, right? So uh, you can also use it, uh, you know, along with your open source automation tools like Terraform and Ansible, uh, which you already use today maybe to, you know, manage your application infrastructure. Uh, uh, Kurt, what are your thoughts on uh, Citrix ADC's automation architecture? Yeah, as we have talked about, you you want to definitely aim for automation. And when you automate, uh, we like to say automate the experience, not just the functions. So think about the security outcomes you're trying to achieve. Think about the experience that you want from an end user perspective, from an administrator perspective, from a developer perspective, from an auditor perspective, and automate for that. And uh, you know, it's helpful to make notations in the code on what you're automating for and why and what that experience uh, is. So a lot of items on this list, but um, a lot of what you see here is the ability for us to have an automation architecture within the ADC that gives you not just scripted automations, but also workflows that uh, can be very deep. The ability to have this consistency across any various environment and um, to automate both for operations as well as usage. So Ritesh, when you take a look at this list, uh, which one's your favorite on here and why? Yeah, uh, absolutely, Kurt. On this list, right, in this context, definitely ADM APIs and in particular style books. Great. So uh, you know, in the going forward uh, um, uh, slides, we will be taking a look at the style books and then you, know, you will understand why it is so important why I like it so much. So let's take a look at what kind of automation tools do we have available. <clears throat> so the first one is, uh, of course, uh, Citrix ADC Nitro APIs. 
Uh, Nitro APIs allows you to monitor and manage your ADC instances programmatically. Uh, these are uh, REST API architecture based. And uh, of course, you can use them to push configurations, pull configurations, and uh, also monitor statistics uh, to see what kind of uh, you know things are happening with your application traffic. Um, we have SDKs available for popular programming languages, which is basically the client-side libraries for your Java, Python, .NET environment. And uh, of course, uh, we also have made available Terraform and Ansible provider modules, which internally actually uses these Nitro APIs. So Citrix ADM uh, manages basically your ADC infrastructure, right? Uh, and these uh, ADCs could be deployed as Kurt mentioned earlier, right? It could be anywhere in a hybrid multi-cloud environment. So <clears throat> when you talk about ADM, I think uh, the important thing here to know about is the ADM Nitro APIs as well. Because uh, Citrix ADM Nitro APIs are REST, not only that they are REST APIs, but it allows you to manage your ADC infrastructure in a, uh, you know, in a consistent way. You can push a consistent configuration across all your ADC instances, uh, and they could be anywhere. Uh, it also has uh, ADM APIs for some of the very important features that ADM brings in, things like Stylebook, right? Stylebook allows you to configure and uh, create and manage configurations as uh, templates, as a, as an application and API-centric templates. Um, then uh, we also have SDK and uh, client-side library available for popular languages for ADM APIs as well. And then there is an Ansible modules as well. Kurt, you want to talk about API gateway? Yeah, please. Uh, you know, one of the other great features that we have within uh, the Citrix ADC and ADM environment is the ability to have an API gateway. So instead of just focusing on some of the services and functions, we also have the ability to uh, define APIs to be able to manage those, to be able to report on those, to instantiate them. And uh, we utilize the open API specification or OAS spec files to help define API resources that are out there and the appropriate methods. And these can be mapped through to your security measures as well. So from a security perspective, you can go through and codify your authentication into APIs. You can codify the encryption aspects of APIs and um, the interface with the Kubernetes and other environments and can also be utilized with the style books or templates that Ritesh was talking about. So this is kind of why we, we both uh, like style books so much. Um, they've been uh, very functional and really help you make sure that you can take something that works well and apply it many times and help others to uh, roll out their environments. You're going to see some real code samples coming up on this, but um, We've, we've got some other great ideas here in terms of managing deprecated APIs, uh, looking at any changes to frameworks and services and noticing those. You know, some of the big challenges as a developer, what changed? Why am I having issues with my code? Well, we can help to manage those within uh, the API gateway environment. So looking forward to uh, some more info on that from Ritesh. Yes, absolutely good. And um, you know, as we go through this presentation, you're going to see several areas where we've got some information referring back to the Citrix developer portal and other documentation. And specifically, this is info for ADC and ADM. So in the short amount of time that we have today, we're not able to get into as much depth as you probably need. We're going to highlight some key areas uh, that you'll want to take a look at, and then we're going to reference the documentation in these blue slides so that you can go back and get into all of the details that help you get your hands on with the code and help you uh, develop services. So coming back to tools, besides the ADM and ADC APIs that we talked about, uh, when you think about open source infrastructure configuration management tool, right? Terraform, and I'm pretty sure like Terraform, I think many of you may be already using it to manage your uh, uh, application infrastructure in the cloud, right? So the good news, right? For many of you, uh, uh, you can use Terraform also to manage the same tool to manage your application delivery controller infrastructure as well in a hybrid multi-cloud environment. You can use uh, them to uh, push the consistent configurations for uh, application delivery related configurations for functions like uh, load balancing, uh, SSL orchestration, content switching, your 
uh, intelligent routing policies, security policies, and other security functions like you know WAF and bot management. Um, so we have these uh, you know, Terraform scripts available to deploy your Citrix uh, VPX instances that earlier Kurt talked about. You can uh, pretty much like download the uh, the AWS and Azure uh, marketplace. Uh, you can download the images for this VPX and then you can use it Terraform scripts to uh, deploy these uh, ADC instances in a public cloud. Uh, not only that, uh, you can also this. I mean, these scripts also takes care of uh, setting up other things which are required for your uh, ADC uh, to work in such an environment, like things like uh, you know VPC subnets, uh, security groups, and so on. Uh, also, uh, we have the same scripts right for Azure as well, where you can. Uh, do this uh, ADC deployment either in a standalone or a HA kind of an environment where your ADCs could be uh, spanning across the region or across the you know, zones. Uh, so here is a GitHub link for uh, the Terraform scripts that I mentioned about and uh, also the Terraform and Ansible modules. So um, feel free to you know fork it and share it and contribute. Uh, there are multiple ways you can contribute here. So you can you know take these scripts and you can try to use them in your environment and uh, report any issues or you know you can contribute to fixing the bugs or help enhance and maintain it uh, for the broader you know uh, ADC user base and the developer community. So uh, cloud native, right? Uh, modern applications are becoming more complex. They are highly distributed for the scale and agility needs of today's uh, cloud scale applications. Specifically, uh, I'm referring here uh, microservices based uh, application architectures, uh, which are adopting Kubernetes and cloud native architecture. So for such an environment, when you have uh, your applications uh, are running, right, it becomes uh, very complex to manage your ADC infrastructure. Um, uh, or any other infrastructure for that matter, right? If you're using any other application delivery controller. And that's where, uh, you know, Citrix ADC, uh, what we have done is uh, we have uh, developed a lot of integration and automation tools. So you can use, uh, you know, this uh, same ecosystem of tools that you are familiar with, things like, uh, you know, Kubernetes, uh, YAML, Hunt charts. You can use the same things to uh, also manage your Citrix ADC instances. Uh, so, uh, also there is a Citrix ingress controller that I want to talk about. So, uh, Citrix ingress controller here is a, basically an ingress controller, right, which watches your uh, Kubernetes application resources and then it automatically configures Citrix ADC uh, as your application scales. So, uh, let's take a look at what other you know, tools and integrations are available for your uh, cloud native environment. So, uh, we have uh, the first of all uh, Kubernetes CRDs. So these CRDs are, you know, uh, specific application delivery related configurations that you would need to worry, right? When you are uh, managing your application in such an environment, uh, things like uh, 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 your load balancing, uh, intelligent routing, uh, API security configurations, right? All those you can do uh, configurations using, uh, just like any other Kubernetes objects, how do you manage using your YAML, YAML or, uh, you know, kubectl or other tools like uh, Kubernetes API, that right? you can use those pretty much the same thing and uh, also configure um, the, uh, your Citrix ADC in the same way. So uh, besides Kubernetes CRDs, we have Citrix Istio adapter. Uh, this Citrix Istio adapter uh, provides a Istio integration. So if you're using Istio to manage your application infrastructure, you can use pretty much it uh, to also manage your application uh, delivery infrastructure. Besides that, we have uh, uh, Citrix observability explorers. So what are these, right? Uh, Citrix observability, observability Explorer, it basically you know, um, collects uh, matrix and transaction data for all your API or application traffic, web traffic that may be passing or being proxied through your ADC, right? So ADC has a lot of these good and very usable matrix available and uh, Citrix Exporter makes it uh, usable in the context of these other tools that uh, you may be you know, familiar with. Uh, I'm referring here to the tools like uh, Kafka, Zipkin, Elasticsearch, Prometheus. Now, uh, I know many of you may already be familiar with these tools, uh, but for some of those who, uh, <clears throat> uh, let's say, are not developers or not familiar, I'll just give you a brief introduction to each of them. So, uh, Kafka, right? So, what is Kafka? Kafka is basically a distributed streaming processing system for your application events. So, when you specify uh, Kafka as an endpoint uh, to, for your Citrix exporter, right? What basically happens is uh, 
um, the uh, Citrix exporter, it fetches the transaction data from your ADC instances and then it converts them into uh, Avro format and then streams them back to your Kafka system. So you can see end to end uh, uh, things. Uh, Zipkin. So Zipkin is a distributed tracing system. It allows you uh, to troubleshoot uh, your highly distributed application, right? Uh, which could be like, uh, you know, spanning across multiple microservices. And uh, so if for you to do a troubleshoot things like uh, latency issues or, you know, any other issues. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, like uh, in, a, in a microservice environment where your uh, single uh, API request or a web uh, transaction request, right? It may actually be spanning through multiple uh, microservices. And then if you want to debug, debug or troubleshoot uh, latency and those kind of related issue, right? Tracing becomes very important. And your traditional tools that you may be using like Wireshark and all, may not be that useful. So uh, that's where open tracing and Zipkin comes into play. And uh, so what Citrix ADC uh, does is uh, for any uh, application traffic that passes through Citrix ADC, right, whether it is API or your web transactions, Citrix ADC generates uh, 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 tracing events, uh, the tracing data, which you can use, uh, you know, uh, with other uh, tracing data reported by your application components uh, uh, to get a holistic view of uh, using tools like Zipkin. Uh, then Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is a distributed analytics engine. Uh, it provides basically the infrastructure for you to generate analytics and insights. So uh, what Citrix Exporter does is it uh, fetches the transaction data for uh, things like HTTP events, right? And then it converts that into uh, a JSON format and generates uh, Elasticsearch indexes on the Elasticsearch servers. So that way you are able to then use it further uh, to generate uh, uh, you know, analytics. Uh, Prometheus. So, Prometheus is uh, basically a monitoring solution. So, uh, for uh, it, it helps you store uh, time series data like metrics. So, when you uh, add Prometheus as a source to your other tools, uh, the visualization tools like Grafana, Grafana, and Kubana, right? You can uh, get more information out of these metrics. Uh, so Citrix uh, ADC, because it being in the data path, right? It sees all the traffic that is proxying or you know being passed through uh, uh, your ADC uh, infrastructure. So uh, as a result of that, it has very rich metrics available. And then what Citrix Exporter does it, uh, it uh, basically converts that you know these metrics, these time series data into something that is usable for you know uh, along with Prometheus and these other visualization tools. So here is a link to uh, the uh, developer portal where you can find more information about these cloud native resources that I talked about. Yeah, thanks, Ritesh. Um, next, we're gonna transition into securing APIs and particularly across hybrid multi-cloud. Yes, uh, very good uh, thought and very good question, Kurt. So hybrid multi-cloud environment, right? It brings the same challenges that we talked about uh, to your API traffic as well. And that's where application delivery management and API security solutions such as API Gateway, right? Becomes very critical. So here is a, you know, um, a, a picture or pictorial of uh, how your typical hybrid multi-cloud environment may look like, where you have your application components or your api servers they are uh, distributed uh, and could be located in any of these you know public multi-cloud environment uh, and now in such an environment uh, of course your adc infrastructure will also be like that uh, because adcs will be where your application components are and uh, again uh, because of that application delivery management plays a very critical role here to manage your adc infrastructure So uh, as we discussed before, right, uh, the ADM service, uh, ADM service is a cloud-based uh, Citrix uh, cloud service, which allows you to manage your ADC infrastructure. It's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a, uh, it has a lot of features, uh, you know, which simplifies the job of managing ADC infrastructure much simpler. And not only that, it provides you tools like uh, Stylebooks, uh, which manages your configuration management, more application-centric, more API-centric. Uh, stylebooks are like API driven. They are composable. You can use YAML to compose them to build your own stylebook templates, and they are version. So uh, you can also create, uh, you know, custom stylebooks uh, for your application-specific configuration needs. 
and then uh, uh, these templates then you just have to worry about you know managing those templates and the config packs of those templates so we'll talk about more uh, as we go forward uh, the other thing i want to bring up here is uh, the citrix cloud service apis which basically uh, uh, takes care of the identity and access management for your ADM service and also other services in the Citrix Cloud, uh, broad umbrella of services that are running there. So coming back to Stylebook. So uh, Stylebook in particular is very powerful uh, and uh, you know because it is REST API based, uh, it makes it even much more powerful. It allows you to create these uh, configurations as uh, declarative atomic instances of configurations, which you can use to manage uh, and structure as code. Of course, uh, the other advantage is also that uh, your API client side code, right? That that don't need to worry about learning the Citrix ADT, uh, ADC entities and uh, resources. Uh, it can just focus on your application specific configurations. So uh, it also makes it uh, your client side code much cleaner and uh, manageable and maintainable. So uh, how do you get started, right? So the first thing is a Citrix Cloud account. So go get yourself a Citrix Cloud account. You can go to this uh, URL or just visit citrix.com, developer.citrix.com and then there are instructions available on how to get started. Uh, once you create your Citrix Cloud account, you can then uh, log into your Citrix Cloud account and create an API client. So once you create an API client and you have, um, you know, uh, client API client credentials established like uh, your client ID and client secret, then you can use it, uh, you know, in your APIs in your automation. So here is how it is supposed to work. Um, so the first thing your APIs need to do is they need to authenticate with the Citrix Cloud, right? So how do they get authenticated? So you send a, your API, like a, a, it shows here, like a post to this particular URI, right? Which is basically an endpoint for Citrix Cloud, uh, Citrix Cloud to authenticate your, your Citrix Cloud account. And once you get authenticated, uh, the, uh, the API gives you a, a bearer token. And that bearer token is what you would use for accessing all other um, you know um, Citrix Cloud uh, APIs like uh, you know your ADM service API, your Stylebook API. So you pass that pair token uh, uh, in the authorization header and then it will give you an access to what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, so I referred to Stylebook APIs multiple times. So let's take a look at what kind of Stylebook APIs are available. So here is a list of commonly used Stylebook APIs uh, for uh, resources like Stylebooks and Config Packs. Uh, what you can do is uh, you can pretty much do the, all the CRUD operations that you can see here, like right? get, repose, delete on these resources. And um, uh, in, in the incoming, uh, you know, uh, the few slides or the examples that I have, I'll specifically be referring to these APIs so you get more uh, uh, visibility and understanding of how to use these APIs. So uh, here is a developer portal, which uh, uh, is a link for uh, you know getting started with your Citrix Cloud account and uh, uh, other APIs that we talked about. Great, thanks. So let's take a look at a uh, specific use case on securing APIs across hybrid multi-cloud, and um, we'll take a look at what this takes using ADM and Stylebooks. Absolutely, Kurt. So uh, here is an example of API proxy style book. So let's take a look at what is happening right here uh, from the developer perspective, from the code perspective. So you are basically sending a post request to this URI. This URI has a, uh, 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 you know, in the path, it has information about which particular um, style book you are referring to, the specific version of it. And then uh, on the left side, you see the config pack, right? So that config pack is basically a JSON body that you're passing. Uh, which has information according to uh, the template that uh, uh, the API proxy is expecting. So here you are specifying basic information, things like, you know, what is your stylebook name? Uh, what are your target ADC instances where you want to create this configuration, right? So in this example, what we are trying to do is we are trying to create an uh, instance of your API, right? And then you say, hey, here's my API and I want to deploy this API um, on this set of uh, ADC instances. So that way those ADCs, when you know, they, uh, they get this API traffic, uh, they are able to proxy the traffic uh, in a right way uh, according to the configurations that you have created here. 
And so in this configuration, uh, the parameters action, you are specifying these basic uh, parameters that you would need, right? And just, just uh, uh, observe the kind of minimal information you are giving. You're giving like IP and port and, uh, you know, very basic information that you would need for the proxy functionality. And then you are giving uh, uh, some information about how uh, you want to do the API routing. So let's say if your uh, specific API uh, request comes for a certain path, right? How do you want it to be routed to your backend uh, uh, API server or a microservice? And where are those running, right? So you just give all this basic, very basic information as a config pack, and then uh, uh, and then it takes care of uh, um, it takes care of basically creating all these you know ADC entities and constructs that ADC understands. So all that gets abstracted out from the developer perspective, from your code perspective. You don't have to worry about that. All that gets hidden, and then all you have to do is just manage this. So uh, let's say once you have deployed your API traffic and now you want to secure it, right? So how do you specify the security policies? So here is a, you know, we'll take a look at uh, like some very basic uh, securities that you would uh, want to configure for your API traffic. So on the left side, you see throttling, right? So here, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm specifying the traffic selection criteria uh, where I'm saying uh, for my API, which starts with, uh, you know, a prefix slash pad, I want to implement the wait limit and uh, then I want to do this kind of wait limit. I want to only allow, let's say, 10 requests per 30 second window. And then I want it to be uh, uh, implemented for each client separately, right? So with this basic information, you are able to go and configure this uh, rate limit uh, policy across all your ADC instances that you have specified as target site. Right? You don't have to worry about uh, learning, uh, you know, ADC constructs or the ADC policy. Uh, language, all those things that's uh, abstracted out from uh, from you as a developer. <clears throat> um, so throttling was one example. Likewise, uh, the authentication right in the bottom left uh, is another example uh, for configuring authentication policy. So again, you are specifying basic rules like uh, uh, for you know my CRUD operations on uh, my store or user or uh, those kind of uh, uh, application resources or API resources. If uh, these methods are going to be post or put or get, I want them to be authenticated. So that's my, you know, uh, policy that I'm specifying right there. And then I'm saying, you know, for these uh, uh, traffic that meets this criteria, right? Here's my uh, authentication that I would like to do. What kind of authentication? So in this particular example, I'm doing a OAuth or OAuth based authentication where I'm saying, okay, I want to do the JWT, you know, uh, token validation. And here I'm up by my parameters to, you know, where you can get these. Uh, 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 specific things that, that you would be needing, uh, you know, the ADC would be needing uh, for you to, for it to be able to do the token validation. Uh, on the right side here is an example of uh, advanced API security for policy. Uh, things like a web application firewall, right? You want to apply a web profile uh, to your API traffic. So how do you do that? You can see here, like in just like, you know, five to seven line of code, you are able to pretty much configure that. Uh, uh, you are able to say, uh, for my uh, any API traffic that comes from my pat endpoint, uh, if it is post or put, I know that it will be carrying the uh, carrying the you know JSON body right payloads. So for those payloads, I want to do the WAF protection. So let's take a look at uh, uh, what kind of uh, WAF protection can you get using these uh, uh, API WAF profiles. So here is an example uh, of uh, uh, the configuration that I'm enabling in my WAF profile. So I'm saying I want to do uh, Sorry, I want to do a JSON DOS protection. So um, as you can see here, right, I have specified, okay, for my application payload or the API payload, which happens to be JSON, I want to make sure that I have, uh, you know, the ADC is doing this kind of protection for me. So my API servers and you know, application servers are protected from uh, JSON DOS based attacks. Uh, I'm specifying here things like, uh, you know, what is my array length? Uh, you know, what is the maximum length of my JSON document? Uh, you know, what could be the maximum length for the key value pairs that are coming. So uh, then ADC, uh, you know, uses this information and then uh, it makes sure that your application, your API servers are protected and they don't, uh, you know, against this kind of a DOS attack that is possible. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the bottom part here, uh, I'm also enabling very basic things like, uh, you know, SQL injection. I'm enabling cross-site scripting. And as you may notice, I'm not even given any other parameters. So when uh, you know, this is the power of uh, the style book. So, uh, all, all, and also for the, you know, ADC. So it also has a default settings. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, customizing unless you absolutely need to. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing you may observe here is the actions that I'm specifying. So for any of these, uh, you know, um, conditions that are configured here, if the uh, traffic pattern matches that, then what kind of action we want uh, our ADC to take? Uh, we can take actions like uh, you can block the traffic. Uh, if you don't want to block it, maybe you want to log it so that way the you know DevOps and uh, DevSecOps can look at that information. You can probably generate the statistics about it so you can see the trends and analytics and insights. Uh, and here is how you, uh, you know, uh, again, like it's basically using the style book, uh, the API web profile style book, and uh, uh, how we can send a request to create uh, using uh, style book APIs uh, to create these kind of profiles. Yeah, thanks for that detail, Ritesh. It's great to see that we can actually apply API protections across ADC, across ADM, and even in the web app firewall. So you've got capabilities that, as a developer, help you make sure that your APIs are protected and working as expected, uh, regardless of where you're rolling them out. Let's take a quick look at another use case in terms of uh, cloud native APIs and talk a little bit about Kubernetes and CRDs. Definitely good. So uh, before I dive into the Kubernetes, uh, you know, specific example, the CRD examples, I just want to uh, uh, make sure like all the developers here, right, uh, they are familiar with Kubernetes CRD. So what is a CRD? CRD is basically a Kubernetes extension that allows you to define your custom Kubernetes objects so that, uh, you know, your custom controllers can then uh, uh, allow a capability for your users to configure them in the same way as they would any other Kubernetes objects. Once you have Kubernetes, created this Kubernetes CRD, right, then uh, your custom Kubernetes controller will then watch for these uh, events, just like any other Kubernetes events, and then will uh, configure the, uh, your uh, controller, your ingress device, uh, you know, using those information that you configure in there. <clears throat> so uh, specifically the Citrix API gateway solution, it has leveraged uh, uh, these uh, Kubernetes CRD, and it has created the CRDs for many of your application delivery related configurations uh, for things like intelligent routing, uh, load balancing, uh, security and advanced security policies. So here is an example of a rate limit CRD, the Citrix rate limit CRD that we have created, right? So uh, rate limit, so let's uh, uh, first understand, right? Rate limit basically improves your availability and resiliency for your API service. And by uh, it does it by monitoring and throttling the API traffic, right? Uh, so in other words, basically it protects your API server from attacks like DDoS. Uh, you can you can specify things like uh, you know how many API resources and uh, how many API resources per client you want to allow. Uh, you can configure a retirement policy based on the URI path. You can specify uh, the the specific method on that URI path. You can also specify if it is uh, you know. Uh, for, for client identifier, things like uh, a client IP address or a client API key. So on the left side here is an example of a rate limit CRD. So as you can see here, I put a kind as a rate limit and it's a static CRD. And then I'm specifying basic information about, okay, I want to apply this configuration to my front end microservice. And then here is what I want to do. I have any API traffic which matches, uh, you know, the URI path that I specified here, like products and order. I want to limit them to 15 requests per minute. And then if it exceeds, then I just want to respond them with a standard 429 response. So uh, in this, like, you know, this 10 or 15 line of code, you are able to pretty much configure all your ADC instances, right, which are uh, facing your API traffic and uh, uh, makes the job of that configuration uh, very easy. And not only that, it becomes an infrastructure as code. So you are able to apply this consistently without any, uh, I mean, with this automation, basically. Okay, here is another example of a, a Citrix WAF CRD. So as uh, earlier we looked at the WAF profile, right, in case of Stylebook, uh, this is a similar configuration. So WAF policy here basically allows you to configure what kind of, uh, you know, WAF protections you want to enable uh, for your API traffic. And then uh, uh, once you have configured those, right, it will apply those to the policies that you have configured. So uh, as you can see here, I have, uh, uh, you can see the kind as WAF. Uh, you can see it's a Citrix CRD, and then you can see how you can enable uh, basic protection checks like a JSON DOS protection, SQL injection, cross-site scripting. You can also specify uh, limits uh, if you want to configure any specific limits. You can also configure uh, common protection checks like your HTTP header, right? So your HTTP header, let's say they are not resulting in, in buffer overflow and these kind of things. 
Here is an example of uh, another uh, uh, Citrix CRD. In this case, it is an authentication policy CRD. So uh, again, similar to the previous CRDs, right? You can specify the traffic selection rules. You can say, okay, uh, here are my methods and uh, here are my resources on those methods for which I want to enable authentication. And once you have specified that, you can say what kind of authentication you want to have for that. So we have multiple uh, different types of authentications that we support. Uh, in the ABI context, the most commonly used is uh, OAuth authentication. So you can see here, like you can specify uh, OAuth authentication based mechanism where you can do the GWT token validation. And just like how you were able to specify some of the information that the ADC would need, uh, you are able to specify a similar uh, uh, information in, in, a, in the form of a CRD. Uh, so the other good thing is, uh, you know, whether your applications are cloud native or whether your uh, applications are running in your traditional hybrid multi-cloud environment, right? the kind of configurations that we do. Well, are, are very similar, exact, or, or in most cases, exact same. So uh, you are able to consistently apply it uh, to your, some of these, you know, your application components may, which may be running in a uh, cloud native environment or maybe running in a traditional environment. Okay, thank you. And um, we're gonna finalize with uh, our last use case and take a look at observability. And really, when you think about hybrid multi-cloud, how do you have visibility across all the various aspects and not have to log into multiple consoles? And similarly, how do you have analytics defining what your baselines look like, how they're changing, and um, areas that you may need to provide some uh, additional resources to uh, to be able to support the needs of the application as it scales? So. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at a couple of things here. So first of all, from an API analytics perspective, you know, Ritesh talked about a lot of the various open source tools that we're working with, and you can see that this works with the Citrix Observability Explorer, so that you've got visibility into and across logging, various metrics, your tracing environment, and also into Service Graph. And uh, you see the reports that are listed here. You know, these are essential items for developers to, to give you the, the knowledge of how the application is actually working in the, the real world, how it's scaling across multi-clouds, any issues that you need to be aware of, and really help you fine tune your, uh, your application as you continue to roll it out and enhance it. So uh, as you can see, scaling across various appliances, whether they're uh, hardware-based, whether they're Kubernetes-based, whether they're virtual machines, whether they're cloud-native, all with a single code base, all with a single set of um, configuration templates and tools, really gives you the ability to gather some very rich analytics and have them be consistent as well. So Ritesh, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, Kibana and some of the some of the things that we can get from a visibility and analytics perspective? Yes, absolutely correct. So earlier I tried to explain right the visualization tools like uh, Grafana and Kibana and uh, Prometheus, right? Uh, uh, so uh, here is an example of a Kibana dashboard and what kind of information you are able to see and how it is possible, right? So in this particular case, uh, you know you are able to see this because of the transaction logs that ADC was able to, you know, convert and then, you know, push it to the uh, Prometheus and uh, um, uh, uh, using Citrix Explorer and uh, uh, also Kibana. Uh, so uh, as a result, then now you're able to go into the transaction level details of, you know, what is happening with your application with traffic, your API traffic. You know, uh, you can think, you can see things like, you know, uh, uh, what time the request was received, what was the specific URL. Uh, you know, what was the response, uh, how much was the, uh, you know, latency in terms of the uh, uh, request processing time that was taken by the your application server. And you can see the trends. So uh, here is how you can see the trends, right? Uh, you can see like, uh, you know, in a certain duration, uh, how many API requests were received and what was the, you know, distribution in terms of, uh, your API resources, like uh, in, in this particular case, it is showing the API accounts, right? For different API, different uh, 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 application resources, like your, uh, let's say, coffee and tea, and these are happens to be, let's say, different, different uh, resources, right? Then you're able to see how many requests for each of them are received in a, in a given duration. So you are able to get those kind of trans analytics information. You're also able to see um, in things like, uh, you know, what kind of authentication was enabled or whether was it enabled, uh, uh, you know, for these, uh, 
uh, API servers. <coughs> Uh, here, here uh, is an example of uh, you know the similar information. You can also get it uh, from the very rich uh, Citrix ADM uh, portal. So, if you have an ADM service account, you can also make use of the the dashboards and uh, insights that is available on Citrix ADM uh, to get these similar information. And this is much uh, richer and uh, uh, also has uh, absolute context to all your uh, you know other configuration structure that is uh, that you may be managing using. You can get information like uh, you know how many API endpoints are there, how many requests per seconds are requests per, received for them, and uh, you are doing all that in the context of uh, uh, a specific window that you may have selected. So let's say you are interested only in last one week worth of uh, information, right? And that's what you are able to get. You are able to see trends like uh, your uh, API endpoint distribution. I mean, basically performance and usage related things like your API endpoint distribution. What are the top APIs being accessed? Uh, what are the most commonly accessed APIs? Uh, you can see you can see things like uh, you know for how many for uh, for them how many of them like authentication was a failure or a success uh, and the trend on that. Then you can uh, dive uh, also into the security aspects of these. So you can uh, take a look at things like. Uh, you know, uh, like how frequently the rate limit is being hit, right? For your specific uh, API endpoints, and then if there is a specific trend uh, that you can see here, you can drill down to the API level. You can drill down to the API endpoint level. Uh, when I say API endpoint, you can go to the specific API endpoint resource, and then you can get this similar information whether it is performance usage or whether it is security. You can uh, also get uh, uh, authentication success failure rate and uh, you can also get information like geolocation. Uh, Kurt, do you want to add to this? Yeah, and as you take a look at API failures and successes, you're, you're looking at this as a user basis, you're looking at it per geo, you're looking at it per cloud, you're able to see whether things are under attack or whether they're running normally. So it gives you a level of visibility beyond just the application to take a look at all the APIs that drive our applications today and make sure that we've got visibility into how they're running out there and uh, what you can do to help make sure that they continue to run to support the, uh, the organization and its needs. And with that, I uh, wanna leave everybody with a, a final thought. You know, as you're going through and developing applications, a lot of what people are looking at these days is the principle of zero trust. And once you've declared a state of zero trust, it's really important that everything you do from that point forward is continuously situationally aware and contextually risk appropriate. So you understand all the different situations that are going on, whether it's on premises, cloud, hybrid, somewhere in between, and you're able to adjust the risk based on the context of who the person is, what their identity is they bring to the table, what uh, their location is, what types of device, what APIs are being utilized, and you can dynamically adjust the situation so that you've got the right level of security, we're achieving operational excellence, and we're hitting the security outcomes that we've all set as our targets. And with that, I'd like to say on behalf of Citrix, Ritesh, and myself, uh, thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, we hope uh, you learned a lot today. We look forward to your Q&A, and uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody.